What we have here is a 1978 CJ7. I've had this one for about 24 years. Uh, 20 years ago, I did the restoration on it, and I've had it ever since. I haven't got into the powertrain or anything like that. Long story short, I was running out of time while doing the project, and I got everything put back together. But the powertrain has been running strong for 20 years, so obviously it wasn't too big of a mistake that I made by not having that rebuilt. It is on my list to redo, so it's definitely something that should be coming. Not necessarily soon, but coming. Long story short, when I first got this Jeep 24 years ago, it was a pile of junk. Um, it had big 33-inch tires on it, and that's what attracted me to it. I All I could see was these big tires on a Jeep, and then I had been wanting a Jeep for some time, and when I saw this, I was sold. Now, it didn't have a windshield. It had a fold and tumble seat out of the back of a Bronco. Um, the fender wells on the inside were held together with electrical cord. Um, that, that fold and tumble seat, by the way, that was coat hangered in place. The rear fender wells were flapping in the wind. The bushings for the leaf springs were non-existent. So with the hard top on, if you got going at highway speeds, it violently would rock back and forth, making you think that it was gonna flip over. Um, you know, the floor was completely rotted. I mean, it was literally a pile of junk, but it had a big V8 and 33 inch tires with a loud exhaust. And like I said, I was sold. Um, but with a lot of work over several years, I uh, got it all put back together, uh, even to the point where I had to toss the frame. Uh, the frame was completely rotted. The tub was rotted. Uh, it, was, it was a large endeavor, especially for my first time out doing something like that, other than just regular oil changes and things like that. But, uh, you know, that's a whole nother story uh, that I could go down probably for hours about everything that went into that. But, needless to say, it's on the road, and it runs strong, and uh, like just about any other Jeep that's out there, it is a never-ending project. There's my wife in the background. Let's see, right, right there. There's Molly, and uh, she's wiping out her car, but uh, getting it clean, keeping it clean. <laughs> After 24 years of ownership, uh, I don't see the Jeep going anywhere. There's tons of projects still for me to do. Um, mainly, I would like to look at re-gearing the, uh, the drivetrain so that I can match those 35-inch tires, get a little bit more torque out of them on the low end. Another thing I'd like to do, I've got the original glass 
for the, the lift gate. I also have all the hardware, all the parts that I need. It's a matter of just doing it. Uh, that came smooth and the hard top is textured from the factory. So I would like to find somebody that could make that texture match. And if I'm gonna do that, I also wanna redo the top itself. And um, there's just a whole litany of things that I would like to do, especially that drivetrain, get everything cleaned up in there, make it look new, make it run like new. But like I said, it does run strong. So I don't have a problem with that portion of it. Um, but yeah, as I said, it's an older vehicle, so it's always going to have something that needs to be done to it. Not sure how the audio is going to be. The uh, Jeep has a tendency to be a little loud, uh, raw, but uh, that's what the Jeep is. It's not fancy, it's not modern conveniences, it's not refined, it's old tech. And even for its day, it was still very basic. But it's a Jeep. One of these things where uh, you're always got something, if not many somethings, on the list of things that need to be done. But uh, again, that's a Jeep. That's this Jeep. Especially the older ones. Always going to be something on that list. So after having upgraded the wheel and tires from 33s to the 35s, uh, the tire no longer fit on the factory spare tire carrier. Now I thought about, you know, did I want to try and work around that, extend that out a little bit, so that I could carry the 35. But the reality is those 35s are pretty darn heavy and it would put too much strain on the body and I don't want to damage it. So, you know, really the reality is changing out the bumper system. Now, if I change out the bumper system, I'm not going to just be able to go with the bumpers that I have on here, the aftermarket ones. You know, it. the reality is it's going to have to bolt to the bumper and this bumper was just never designed for that, so it's not gonna work. The factory hangers, you know, they're still there. Um, you know, when the time comes, I may remove them and then go from there. But if I'm gonna change out the rear bumper, the reality is I'm gonna have to change out the front bumpers. So, you know, I've had these bumpers for a long time, but the reality is if I want it to look right, they're gonna have to match. But then the question is, am I also changing out the sidebars? Don't really wanna do that. So, you know, cost-wise to do it right, I'm probably looking at anywhere from like three to four grand to get a good setup. I had looked into having a guy build, you know, fab me a set, but the reality is after thinking about it, it was just one of those things that I just wanted to go with something that had a little bit more of a professional look to it. So holding off until I decide to pull that, you know, financial trigger. So with this Jeep, again, 1978 CJ7. It's got a three-speed manual and a 304 from the factory. So it's got that five liter engine. And, uh, you know, it may not be AMC's best power to weight ratio Jeep, when it comes to the engine, but you gotta love that V8 sound. Um, nothing quite sounds like that Jeep V8 that's got the dual exhaust coming off of it. Um, it, it just, to me, it just sounds great. Um, a lot of times I don't even drive with the radio on, I'm just humming along, listening to the exhaust as I go. If I would, you know, over the years I thought maybe I could change something, it would have been maybe a four-speed transmission, a little bit more user-friendly throughout town. But over time, the three-speed has really grown on me, obviously. And uh, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, I enjoy the fact that it's what it came with.
Hope you enjoyed today's episode of Rob's Garage, where we talk about the Jeep. If you would, make sure to hit that like button and share with your friends. And if you would, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you can see updates of when new videos come out. Once again, thanks for watching. And until next time, Rob's Garage.